Let's see one out this morning. We've had a pretty good week of weather. We're all able to travel. That's something to be thankful for. Get out and go. Randy said there's three important things. One of them is get up, get out, and go. Get started. So that's a good thing. Be able to do that. Our scripture lesson today is uh, Dead to Sin, Alive in Christ. And it comes from Romans 6 1 through 14. And it says, <clears throat> Balance is important in just about everything in every area of life. If we spend too much time working and too little time resting, or vice versa, it can cause physical and emotional and relational problems. If we spend a lot and save a little, this will eventually produce a big financial problem. If we do not have a balance in diet, our health can suffer. From both a practical and Doctrinal, doctrinal standpoint, Christians must also be balanced. When we must share the gospel and with a balance of grace and truth. We must take care of our souls, bodies, and minds, but also care for others. Theological balance is needed as well. Otherwise, we might spend more time on secondary issues than prioritizing foundational doctrines of the faith. There are many people who emphasize God's grace over his righteousness and there are others who stress the perfect towing of the line even though they believe they have been saved by grace. God, but God is perfectly balanced in his attributes. <clears throat> the writer here is, is writing to people in Rome even though he had never been there. He knew that they had, the church had been started there and uh, they were having some questions about serving God and how they should act and what they should do in order to serve Him and be true Christians. You know, at this time uh, there was a lot of, of different uh, cults, sects, uh, whatever you could, uh, different folks that had different ideas of how to, uh, to uh, for lack of a better term, do Christianity and serve God. And, you know, they were, uh, like I said in, in the uh, opening there, they were talking about some believe was truly in grace and, and uh, they could do pretty much what they wanted to and some believed, you know, that they had to uh, keep the Jewish law. You know, there was a group of Jewish, the Judaizers they were called, the Jewish folks that believed that if you didn't keep the Jewish law, you couldn't be a Christian. And it was tit for tat, you know, back and forth. And they, uh, they really didn't uh, have direction. And the writer here is trying to give them an answer to their questions. You know, they, uh, uh, there's a lot of people today that are torn between two or three ideas of how to be a Christian. You know, they some that, uh, that uh, profess Christianity and uh, never see the doors again. They, I'm saved and been baptized. I'm gone. I can do anything I want to now, you know. And some of them, you know, uh, back and forth, in and out, and whatever. We see the whole spectrum as we travel, you know. And there's other cults and stuff and other beliefs that are trying their best to uh, take old Christians out of churches and take their children out of churches and all this stuff. It's, you know, it's it's uh, it's a scary time right now when you get to look around and see uh, people and things that are happening in our nation, you know, the stuff, things that are coming in that we have no control over, you know, and then uh, whatever it is, uh, this virus and all these things, you know, it's, uh, it, it looks, you know, uh, uh, perilous, really. <coughs> serve a, a righteous and true and living God and he's in control. We need to remember that. I forget that sometimes, you know, I get to think about what's well, this going to happen, how that's going to do, and what all, you know, and I, I get to thinking back, well, I ain't got no control over it, no man, I might as well, uh, you know, what I can control, control it, and, uh, or try to, and, and do whatever I can and let it go to rest, you know, that's about the only way that, that we can. But here the writer, he says, 
here uh, about sin and, and, uh, and Christ. He said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? These folks had, uh, as I mentioned before, they had the idea that uh, uh, the more you sin, the more grace you got. You know, it didn't make any difference if you were saved or whatever, that you would have received grace and you could go ahead and do whatever you wanted to. And God would apply grace to your soul, to your life, and things would be going along really well good. You know, you, there wouldn't be any retribution for what you were doing. And he said, that grace may abound. You know, they, they, they want him to do more and, and have more sin and whatever and not uh, pay any attention to, to God. But he says there in verse 2, said, God forbid. He said, how shall, shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You know, when Christ died on the cross and was buried and resurrected, he didn't go back into the tomb, did he? Mm -hmm. He didn't go back. You know, he went on somewhere else. He carried on and he gave us a way of following him. You know, he told his disciples, you know, they asked him, said, how do we know, Lord, where we're going and how to do? And he told them he's going to send the Holy Spirit to lead and guide and help and for them to travel on the journey. You know, and not to go back. Not to go back to the old ways that they had. He said, God forbid, how shall we see that? <clears throat> how shall we that are dead to sin? We have been forgiven for our sins. When we receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, we're forgiven of the sin and give eternal life. You know, that's not to say that we're not going to sin again. We still live in the world. We still are human beings. Our body, you know, like sin. Really. Man is, you know, we can't control a lot of things to a certain extent. But here he says we're dead to sin. We don't have to do that. Sometimes we slip up or whatever and do sin. You know, there's a sin of omission and there's a point of, uh, of just going ahead and sinning. There's things that we should do that we don't do, and that's a sin too, but, you know, it says here that we have forgiveness for this. You know, it, it, some people have, uh, think that there's not enough blood to cover all the sins in the world, but there is. Right. Christ gave his life for every sin. It can be covered. Now, it's not a blanket coverage. It don't just spray out all over everything and whatever for everybody, you know. A lot of folks think so. Uh, when they die, they're going to heaven if they've never even, uh, uh, you know, professed any uh, belief in Christ or anything like that. But that's not true. You know, there's only one way to 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 eternal life and in, in heaven and in Christ and in God's presence is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. That's the only way. You know, and then he says here, <clears throat> we don't have to live any longer in sin. We don't have to be controlled by sin. Christ gave us that uh, assurance. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized unto his death. Baptism is uh, a way of, of uh, an example of dying to sin and resurrection just as Christ did. You know, it, uh, it is an ordinance Christ talked about it's not what saves a person, but it's an ordinance that we do, and we it ties us to His death, <coughs> burial, and resurrection. So when they put us under the water, we were baptized. That was a form of dying to sin. When we come out of the water, that was resurrection. That was the coming forth of a new person, a new body, a new life. Not just Christ did. That's, that shows. What he did. You know. And it says here, therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christian was Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. As I said before, Christ didn't go back to the tomb. He didn't stay in the tomb. He's gone. He's alive. He's with the Father. And he should showed us. And, and told his disciples and, and 
show them, uh, you know, and, and give them his word through divine uh, leadership and guidance. They wrote his word down of what he wanted us to know and, and give us a, a direct path and a, and a way to eternal life and, and to salvation. Here he says, we are raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. You know, there's a lot of people think that the things they do, the good things they do, you know, I've heard people say, well, I don't bother anybody, and I give this, or I do that, or I work for this organization, or I work for that, you know, and I think I'll be all right. But there it says, we are raised by the glory of the Father. It ain't theirs. We didn't have a thing to do with it. Accept the fact that we did accept his redemptive work and his blood. We didn't have the things that we can do or, or can do, you know, have done or can do aren't enough to save us. We are saved by the glory of the Father. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall not. We, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Just as he was resurrected, we are resurrected. We brought forth to what? To an eternal life. Just as he has an eternal life. And we will be changed in a twinkling of an eye. And these old bodies that we have are going to be given a glorified body that will never be sick anymore. You know? It's going to be just like he is in a place that's going to be where he is. And he says, in the likeness of his resurrection, we are coming forth. We are coming forth. We have a change for that. When we were baptized and, and, and when we came out of the water, we were fixed for we can have a life here on earth and enjoy being a Christian. You know, there's a lot of folks that that don't enjoy Christianity, you know, they're just worried to death about what they uh, can't do or will do or whatever, you know, and they don't enjoy life. But he says we can enjoy it. You know, we don't have a lot of uh, a lot of restrictions or a lot of worries that most people do, you know. You know we have an assurance that we have an eternal life. We can't die no more. We'll die one time, if, you know, if he don't come back before. Uh, be, before it turns, comes our turn to die. But that second death won't bother us. That's the one that's really important anyway, is that second death. That's the one that's going to, uh, <clears throat> the fellow said, put you in hot water. That's the one that's going to cause you a problem. It's that second death. The first thing ain't going to be bad to a believing Christian. You shut your eyes and wake up in heaven. Pretty good transition. It says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that the, henceforth we should not serve sin. Our body and our hearts and our minds have been transformed. You know, they've been opened up, and in order to receive the message, you know, that we don't have to sin anymore. And to receive the message, you know, and, and uh, God a lot, a lot of times looks over his children. You know, he, he, he keeps them from harm. You know, he keeps them from sinning. You know, he, he puts a, a protective hedge around us. Now, it's not to say that we can't break over that if we decide to, you know, and, and willfully sin or whatever, but there's a protective hedge around us, and there's something that goes ding ding up here in her head, you know, or, or in her heart or wherever, and says, you don't need to be doing that. Or you don't need to be here, you know. And things. So he says here <clears throat> that of sin might be destroyed, that the body of sin might be destroyed. We don't have to be in that body anymore, that henceforth we should not serve sin. We don't have to do that anymore. For, the, for he that is dead is free from sin. If we've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, we don't have to sin anymore. There's redemption for our sin. You know, if we do mess up and sin or however what happens, 
We can ask forgiveness for it. And get forgiveness for it. We don't have to die in sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live <clears throat> with him. This is the assurance that he gave <clears throat> his apostles and they <clears throat> sent it all down to us in the writings. The assurance that we will live with him forever. Several different religions have different places and different different levels of salvation or whatever. You know, only some of them says there's a purgatory between here and hell and people go and you can pray about a purgatory or whatever and this and that. But according to my book, it says there's two places. Preached on the last Sunday. Heaven and hell. You're either in or you're out. If you ever get in, you don't never get out. So here it says, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that he shall all that we shall also live with him. Live. With him. That's life that we'll ever experience. Knowing that Christ being risen from the dead dies no more. Death has no more dominion over said before, he don't have to go back to the tomb. He's not in the tomb. All these other fellas, the Mohammeds and the, and the Buddhas and all these other folks, they can go back over there to where they're at. Their bones and ashes are there. Their Savior's not there. He's not in that tomb. He just ain't there. He got up and left on his own path. Death, hell, and the grave. I mean, he's conquered them all. He's gone. Yeah. Waiting for his bride. Waiting for his church. Waiting for the folks that are believers in him to come where he is. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. <coughs> God's eternal. He says he died to sin once, but he lived to God eternal. His life is with God and through God. He's there with him, sitting on the right hand, making intercessions for us. Likewise, <clears throat> reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We're alive with God and to God by His Son, by His redemptive work and the grace and that He gave and the death that He endured on the cross and His resurrection. This is how it got here. He came and done the work. He was here that purpose. It says, through unto God we are born alive again, alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us not sin, therefore reign. Let not sin, therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that ye should obey it in the <clears throat> you should that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. There's a way not to sin, he says. Even though our mortal bodies like sin, we like to do stuff. You know. He says we don't have to. We don't have to follow that lust. We don't have to follow what we'd like to do. We're dead to it. We're immune to it. We don't have to do that. <clears throat> Neither you and you your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but you as yourself unto God as those are alive from the dead, and your members are instruments of righteousness unto God. Our bodies can be bodies and instruments to the glory and of God and to His message and His work. We don't have to do these other things. It, it sounds redundant every time you read a verse. It, it, it 
reminds us and reminds us that we don't have to do these things. And we don't have to die and go to hell. We don't have to do that. There's a way made that we don't have to do that. He says, for your members are instruments of righteousness and the God. said if you're in a hole, first thing to do is stop digging. No. We were placed here in the hole, wasn't we? But we don't have to dig that hole no deep. We can quit digging. We can follow him. He says our instrument, our lives, can be of lives of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. There's a lot of people that all they think about is some, some sin <coughs> or whatever they're going to do or whatever they're going to do. I mean, that's all they think about. It says here that it says, Sin shall not have dominion over you. <coughs> we don't have to do that. Ye are, all, ye are not under the law, but under grace. The Judaizers at this time and some other folks were trying to tell the Christians that they were supposed to be uh, following the law, that they wasn't doing right, they wasn't serving Christ, they wasn't serving God if they didn't uphold the Jewish law. As we've read and studied, the law was only a scale. You know, you see on the, on the, on the side of the wall what to do and what not to do. It was the laws that said that you had to not do these things if you wanted to serve God. But there was not a person except the Lord Jesus Christ that could live without breaking that law. Nobody had. You know, we, we read and study the Old Testament and look back. And God gave the laws to his people as they traveled. You know, he gave them to Moses and they deserved to come across the wilderness. And he gave them the laws. Ten Commandments and all the other laws that, that are in the Old Testament. And we followed that to, uh, through the Old Testament for several hundred years. From the time of, of uh, when, they, when they came out and after they got to law, we followed them as a history in the Old Testament. And if the Old Testament no, does nothing else, you know, there's a lot of people that think that there's nothing in the Old Testament but a history book. Given that fact, given that point, if the Old Testament does nothing else, it should prove to us that we can't serve God on our own. So, these folks work diligently. If you go back and read how many sacrifices they had to give and how many feast days they had to have and all the things that they had to do to try to appease God and try to keep themselves straight and the, and the children of Israel straight to where, they could, to where they could serve God. They had to do all these things, you know. And still it didn't work. It said to come up short. You know. But the only thing that, that we read, uh, the one thing that, that sticks out in the Old Testament is when they got ready to go out of Egypt. The death angel was coming. They told him. said, now you've got a choice. This things was coming tonight. Only way that you can be saved is the blood of life. It's through the blood of a, of a, a spotless lamb. And they applied that to the doorpost and uh, across the door and the post. They things were crossed open and they were able to leave and come out into to uh, uh, the Father God where he led them into the promised land. They had some months and months that they didn't really get there. But here we see that that's the way it is today. You know, the only way we can be saved is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ being applied. The Jewish aspect of this says like most things in the New Testament, 
Apostle Paul concept of dying to sin points back to the Old Testament teaching. It means to cast it aside, fleshly desire, but they, but they <coughs> sinful, but be they sinful us for merely being interested that happen to be outside of God's plan for you and following Him. It is necessary, it is a necessary decision that requires us with God's help to overcome our sinful nature and trust Him to work in our life. God to give him the right. Following God leads to a better life than following the world. Even if a believer must walk away from earthly prosperity, the children of Israel escape slavery, beginning with Moses' decision to have compassion on God's people according to his call. The Lord provided for Moses' basic needs as he led Israel to the promised land. Moses never got to set foot in Canaan due to disobedience, but it is unlikely that he died with regrets about turning his back on the world's expectations to follow a sovereign God. He made the mistakes as he went along, you know, but he still, he said, here he died with little regret to following God. Although Moses served as a positive example, Throughout the scripture, his obedience alongside there and caused both men of God, <clears throat> both men of God, further earthly blessings. They took the credit for the water spring from the rock at Meribah when the children of Israel complained of thirst in the wilderness. Both followed God's command, at least in part, but they did it in a partly selfish way. Soon after, both men passed away before God people arrived in the promised land. The incident reminds believers of always give God the glory and follow his will. It is easy to want affirmation from others for our godly deeds. But we should not teach singing or do anything. We should not teach, sing, or anything else in his service in order to steal glory from him. Moses and Aaron's sin, sin should also remind us Pastors, missionaries, and others serving God have their own limitations when dealing with negativity and negativity and compliance. Those in Aaron, Aaron's sin were less <coughs> were less glaring than the most direct actions against Israel by Pharaoh and other biblical adversaries. But as Paul writes in Romans six twenty three, all that sin earned all that sin urged us is death. You are regardless of the personal beliefs to die because we are all born in sin. As Ezekiel bluntly put it, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. In the, in the immediate context, this refers primarily to physical death, but Scripture makes it absolutely clear that sin has eternal ramifications. If sin is responsible and death is inevitable, then what is the point of living in obedience to God? Fortunately, both. Fortunately, the Bible is a book of hope and answer, not doom and gloom. First of all, the believers in life should be in continually doing the Lord's will. Living according to God's will by itself does not equate with eternal salvation, but it definitely makes for a happier uh, life for the believers because they know it pleases God. When we live under sin's curse and do not follow God, your need to die, your God, you needed to die to sin so that you could be reborn in Christ and your actions and desires could be centered on his plan for your life because even the most faithful believers fall short of God's sinless glory in, his, in this life. We will need to die to sin every day. It is a continuous choice we can make and follow through on the light of God's promise. There's a way made. It's fixed. If we can follow. If we will follow. We can follow. It don't say that we have to be uh, completely pure and, and never sin. You know. But it can be a, it can be achieved. Salvation and eternal life can be achieved through belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. It was a gift given to us by Him. Okay. 
Anybody got anything to say, a scripture verse you'd like to read or comment? Request of prayer, Lord, all the people that are sick. Seems like there's so many, Lord, and it just keeps going on and on. But we know that you know each one. We know you can heal each one if it's your will. Just lead and guide direct us to this day, Lord. Be with us, help us to be where you'd have us to be. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.